skills. Have you ever used one of these phones? Yeah. yeah. How about when one of your associates come talk to you and you're like, yeah, go ahead, talk, sit down. Mm-hmm. Let's talk. Sit down, and you're like, yeah, so what's up? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> yeah, you okay. <laughs> Have you ever done that before? Yes. yes. You know what you call that? Bad man. It's called being rude. Extremely rude. Very disrespectful. Is that you? No. Was that you? Yeah. I'm so glad you changed. <laughs> Imagine doing a presentation like this. Imagine I'm just doing a presentation with this. How important am I allowing you to believe you are? Not that much. So what you have in your hand, even though you're not utilizing it, can have a really bad experience to the other person. Does that make sense? And life is all about experiences, so we have to learn how to have good skills, not bad skills. Mm -hmm. I've learned in the last five, ten years, I've never seen so many people saying that they're coaches. They wanted, like I had this person that just came aboard, and they were like, oh, this business is not for me, I want to be a coach. I'm like, really? Yeah, a life coach. I said, awesome. I said, uh, where have you taken you lately? Because <laughs> how are you going to take other people somewhere you haven't gone? That makes sense? Yeah. Like when I decided to come to this business, I interviewed about 12 offices. No one brought me into WFG. I recruited myself. <laughs> I recruited myself into WFG, and I called 12 offices, and I called them up and said, hey, my name is Juan Nunez. I'm interested in coming aboard your, bir- your, your firm, but before I, do, before I do that, I would love to go over your office and ask you a few questions about how you run your operation. Fredo was one of them. When I spoke to Fredo, the, there, was, there was three things that stood out to me. One, Fredo was hungry. She didn't arrive. In other words, she was not making millions where she felt that she was arriving, that she arrived. You went so far? That's number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, she was hungry. Number three, she will pick up my phone call at 12 o'clock midnight. She didn't say this to me, but based on where I was gauging her, I realized that she will call me because she, she will. Make sense? Yes. Mm-hmm. And the other, she was a giver. She was part of a nonprofit organization. I was like, this is the one I want to work with. And I sat down with a lot of people, most seven figures, but guess what? Will they will be willing to pour into me and pick up my phone and guide me to where I want to go. And I knew that she was a do it first leader. So you gotta first do it yourself and then influence others second. Don't try to influence anybody to do something you haven't done yet. Does that make any sense? Yes. Because a lot of you are saying, hey, go do five by five but yet you haven't even done three by three. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine what your business would look like if you just gave, if you just took your own team's goal and did it yourself? Because mm-hmm. yeah. they say you, your team will only do half of what you do. Right. Mm. Now imagine if everyone did the same thing you did last month. What would your numbers look like? <laughs> will you hire you? Will you have a championship team if everyone did exactly what you did? Hey, before you go, thank you so much for being engaged. I'm really excited to share with you. We're going to be rolling out our Coaching Leaders Academy curriculum to be able to empower you, grow you, and be able to pour into you. So click the link below, subscribe, like, and share it.